Hey everybody, Sunny here. Before we get to the show, I just remind you all where you can listen to my podcast, Casa Loud Chats. I'm on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more streaming platforms. I'm even on YouTube. With YouTube, just search for Casa Loud Chats and every episode of my show is up there on YouTube. And now, on with the show. And welcome to Casa Loud Chats, a podcast dedicated to Nickelodeon's The Casa Grandes and the Loud House universe. And I'm your host, Sunny. And welcome to episode 38 of Casa Loud Chats. And this time I remember because the last episode was 37. I accidentally said episode 36, but yes, it's episode 38 of the show this time. And today we're going to be talking about some episodes of The Loud House and the Casa Grandes that just premiered that's you know, are going to be interesting, that's for sure. Uh, but today I'm actually not alone in talking about these episodes, thank God, because <laughs> I don't want to talk about them alone. I have a very special first-time guest with me today on Casa Loud Chats. This person I've known over at Twitter, it is your homie JD. Welcome to my show, JD. Well, it's pretty fun to be here. I'm really excited to have you on. Thank you for doing this. Anytime. So, JD... I just open your horizons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for volunteering to be the guinea pig to talk about some very special episodes of these shows, I would say. Yeah, special. <laughs> we'll say that special. All right, so, JD, there's probably some people out there who don't know who you are, so I'd like you to give a little introduction about your yourself to our audience. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, what's up? I'm JD. I do mainly art. I do a few impressions. I'm just some, I'm just someone you can talk to if you want. But more important, but most likely you'll just see me talking about anime, Loud House, gaming, something that most people have common interest in. Awesome. Yeah, it's been really cool getting to know you in the uh, Casa Live Discord that means Saran and the others Same. made up, which is like really been a it's been one of the highlights of this year for me just to join that Discord and do the Casa Live sessions and Shameless Plug, we just did one Same. yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we did one yesterday. I'll put a link in the description for that. <laughs> but yeah, so much fun. So thank you so much again for coming on to do this. And it's been really fun getting to know you. Same here. All right. And so, all right. So um, I was going to say, let's get into some Casa news that I usually do, but Sadly, for you coming on this week, there's no new, there's no news for the Loud House or the Casa Grandes because we just had new episodes. Actually, there is. Oh, what do you mean? Actually, sunny, there is. What do you mean? Oh, um, no, somebody in the server posted a, a um, picture with the air date for Curse in another country. Oh, yes. Well, we do have that news, of course, because we already know about Curse, but we, we still, we still don't have an air date for us in the U.S., because Europe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Europe says November 28th, and I don't think we're going to get it that late for us. But I think that's a sign saying we're going to get the curse air date very soon. Just, I hope it's but very soon. Something tells me, like, something tells me late November. Because, yeah, yeah. like, I checked the wiki, it had an eight-day cycle for the episode release dates. Like, for example, Us Maybe came out... September 18th? You can't, like, in Canada, eight days later, the 26th, that's when it debuted. I'm saying each, I'm saying that if the eight-day cycle thing is still relevant, first could potentially be November 20th. I mean, I, I believe you, but at the same time, I feel like it could be earlier just because we don't have any other episodes of The Loud House of the Casa Grandes coming out. We've heard nothing about other new episodes besides Cursed. And that's the last episode that needs to air. I don't think they're going to push it so far down from when it could air. Because again, we haven't heard any other new episodes besides that one. I still think it's going to... Because there is a holiday coming up in November. Like November 11th or the 12th is a holiday. And I think that's... Yeah. I think that's when it's going to air. Because everybody was predicting 
November 13th, because Friday the 13th, but they're airing that, like, new dog show or whatever. Astronauts. Yeah, on Nickelodeon. Astronauts. Right, yeah. So, th so they can't air it that day, so I think it's gonna be that holiday, you know, because right now that's the only other new episode they have to air at the Casa Grandes that's in season one. So, and I don't want to wait too long for it. I want it right now. Truthfully, I wouldn't mind if it comes out a little later, because then again, we have been getting like, these new episodes every Friday, constantly. So, I feel like the reason we're not getting the air date so early is because they want to slow down the steam train for railing. Yeah, but, like, also, but also because I, I think the astronaut show is taking the Friday slot now. Because it's airing that Friday, but then they're getting new episodes every Friday. So I think they're still trying to figure out, oh, wait, we're going to air the astronaut show on Friday nights. What are we going to do with the Loud House of Casa Grandes? And I'm afraid that... Like What's that? No, I feel like... I feel like they're going to do this Friday night block thing where, like, it's astronauts, then it's Loud House, then it's Casa Grandes. Or they can do whatever they want with it. I mean, they could, but I think astronauts is airing... Um, at 7 o'clock, like, around the same time the Loud House of the Casa Grandes would. I was thinking, and I, I really don't want them to do this again, they're probably gonna bring back the bomb format, which I don't like. You know, I was fine with the Friday oh. premieres, and I hate the bomb format. Or they could do Saturday premieres like they did last year, which I was okay with, but I didn't care for, because it was too early. I liked the Friday premieres, I just don't know what they're gonna do, because... We've heard nothing about scheduling or air dates. We'll probably find out this week. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. I really don't know what uh, I could do. <laughs> oh, it screwed everything up. Plain and simple. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It feels like... Curse, it really does feel like Curse was meant to come out earlier than we thought. But because of our current situation in the world, we can't... We didn't get it early. Well, I think... I think the other reason is because they aired season two before season one was done. You know, like we had season two of Casa Grandes, Fails for the Crept and Bad Cluck air before season one was even done. Cause even they, ended. Yeah, because they wanted like Halloween episodes to air on Nickelodeon and they wanted to pair with the Ghosted special. So it makes sense. But at the same time, we should have gotten Curse like before this. But that's just how Nickelodeon scheduling works. So, you know, what can you do? If they really wanted to air an episode to go with Ghost, they curse would have been perfect. I mean, a back-to-back -back yeah. special would have been amazing. I would have, I would have went for that. <laughs> Absolutely. They could have. I feel like they could have seamlessly had them both. They could have seamlessly had it as a one-hour movie event. Yeah. So both specials are two difference. Yeah, that would have been incredible. But I'm thinking that like. Uh, if they are gonna just, like, have it air on a certain day, like, Curse, I feel like they're just, they're just gonna pair it with two new Loud House episodes, and then premiere Curse like they did with Ghosted and the two new Casa Grande episodes. I guess they just haven't figured out what Loud House episodes are we gonna pair with Curse yet, so. Again, we'll, we'll probably find out this week or next week when the air date is, but yeah, as of right now, we are on hiatus for both shows. We don't know when the shows are coming back. We don't we don't have any other new episodes of these last two weeks of October. So hopefully we'll find out something. And please, Nickelodeon, I'm, I'm lighting my candles that Curse comes out early. I want Curse, like, the first or second week of November. I don't want to wait till, like, after Thanksgiving or whatever it's airing in Europe, you know? I want it right now. <laughs> If, if we have to watch it in Europe just to see it. Oh my god. Like, I'm I'm really scared it will get leaked early in another country. I'm really, I'm terrified of that. Because the sneak peek that came out for Curse was released in Australia. <laughs> and I'm afraid it will get leaked out in Australia early oh, before we right. do it. Yeah. Because that's where I found it. I found it in Nickelodeon Australia's website. So I was like, wait, if they, if they have the clip... Will they leak it before us? That's what I'm worried about. Like, they do this thing. Like, there's the, the um, Dragon Ball movie that came out two years ago. They did the same thing with it. Like, it got, like they showed the trailers and all, but then they had this early showing that got leaked. Because people don't know when to shut up about things. <laughs> yeah. Like, the whole, the whole movie got leaked. Yeah. I avoided it. <laughs> Yeah, like the new Spongebob movie, Sponge on the Run, that 
that's gonna get leaked in yeah. in, Nick, in Netflix UK. So everybody's gonna see it before like the because US is like putting it on like CBS Access or something like that. So CBS All Access, that's right. redundant. Yeah, I know. You right? really wanna put you wanna put your Nickelodeon shows on a platform, Netflix. Yeah, just do it on Netflix. Netflix the Netflix Nickelodeon partnership is working really well. Yeah, I, I just that's obvious to see. I just don't know why they're doing it that way. Like, you know, we're getting we're getting the Loud House movie next year on Netflix. I don't get why they can't put the split button. Right yeah. Call me right now. When they release the movie on Netflix, they're gonna release all of Loud House that's in the least at the time and all of Casa Grande's. Oh, I mean, yeah. they, they did the same thing. I mean, they did the same thing with Avatar and Chorus since they're making the live, the um, Avatar remake. I mean, that'd be great because, like, right now, Loud House is on CBS Access, though. They have season one and two on CBS Access, so I wouldn't be surprised. In other countries. Yeah. yeah. In other countries. My friend, one of my friends from another country, he told me that. Lot of season one and two is on Netflix in that country. Oh yeah, I heard about that. So I wouldn't be surprised if they moved it over just for the movie, like to hype the movie and stuff. That'd be a smart marketing tactic. Yeah, but uh, you know, talking about cursed again, are you excited for cursed? Because I'm really excited for cursed. At this point, anything ship related gets me hyped. Oh well, now we're when it's loud. I feel like that one gift where it's like, are we are we best friends now? Yup. <laughs> like that's me. Anytime there's ship related stuff, like of course I'm gonna be hyped because you know me, the biggest Roddy can fan in the entire fandom. Of course I'm freaking hyped to see my babies again. It's been forever. <laughs> well here on the Lincoln Prince. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm the Roddy and the number one Roddy and fan, I would say, in the fandom for me. I kept oh, that. that's a definite fact. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited just because it's another crossover and we're going to get the Lazo Casa Grande, the Casa Grande say over with the Lows and, you know, all that ship fuel and it's a whole special. It's, I'm like, we all want it now, Nickelodeon. If you hear us, we want it now. Just give it to us already. Like, just give us an error date. We all want it. Best part about Curse is that I feel like when you leave major hype episodes ambiguous, it's a good thing because it leaves a lot of possibilities for people to theorize, speculate, like what's going to happen. You don't really know. Right. That's why I think them leaving curse ambiguous is a good thing. Yeah, because like also crossovers equal bank. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Because like when we heard about curse the first time, we heard about it being a special, and it was like Rosa thinks that Ernesto. It, or, or Rosa thinks the whole city's cursed because Ernesto said so. We didn't know what the episode was going to bring us. We just thought, oh, it's just going to be like, no such luck but in the Casa Grandes. But then I kind of theorized, well, Ernesto's from Horoscope. So I was like, maybe of they- course. Of course. Of course. Absolutely. Best episode. So I was like, well, I mean, they could make a reference. Like, I was making a joke about, like, maybe Roddy and might say, like, oh, you know, Abuela's listening to Ernesto again and- I remember one time he thought I was going to find love. Ha ha, that didn't happen. And brushes off like, you know, she's nervous or whatever. But then, like, the fact that they're doing a crossover in this episode with Ernesto, who's from Horoscope, and that was the Roddy Kid Fuel episode, and they're already giving us Roddy Kid in this episode. I'm just saying, man, I'm putting the, I'm putting the, pieces, the puzzle, puzzle pieces together. I'm just saying. It could lead up to something. I don't know. We don't know yet. Like, like you said, we all have time to theorize about this episode before we find out more about it. Honestly, honestly, once you get used to like certain ships and certain things that are used to get the indicator nest them, your nest is like an indicator that Ronnie Ken is going to show up. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I was even thinking that once I heard about the um, synopsis for Curse, I was like, oh, are they really about to do this? Yeah. I no, they, they wouldn't. <laughs> Then I realized that, oh god, November was when Horoscope came out. Yeah, that's... That made me that, think, oh my god, they're bringing Ronica back. That's, that's the thing, too. Like, again, this is, this is probably going to air in November around the same time as Horoscope, which, by the way, I'm doing Ronica Kid Week. Shameless plug, I'll put in the description. But yeah, I'm doing that. And Yeah, um, I know, I'm doing it. Thank you. Thank you for contributing. Everybody contributed to Ronica Kid Week. That's my shameless plug. And the fact that it's going to air in November... <laughs> 
Hey, I mean, it's my show. I'm already plugging my own stuff anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you do a podcast, my friend. You gotta do shameless plugging. <laughs> um, <laughs> no former regret. Nope, no regrets. And so, like, the fact that it could air in November, around the same time as Horoscope, and last Thanksgiving, mind you, that also aired in November, which also had... Like one moment of Roddy Kid, of course, but it's also the crossover. And again, this episode has. Last Thanksgiving is the only episode I haven't seen. Wait, you haven't seen Last Thanksgiving? Why? No, because like, no, um, because I no, because after Relics of Chaos, I left the. I actually left like the fandom in the show, and then when I came back, it was Break the Last Dance that came out. Oh, like, well, not too recently. Oh, well, I think you need to watch that episode before Curse comes out, because that is... I've seen, cl- like, clips. I've seen, like, clips and snippets of it. Like, I've seen the... Uh, I've seen Luna and Hector singing the Mercado part with Lincoln, Ronnie, and that little jokes, the, um, changing expressions. The obviously iconic punk loser. Oh, so iconic, is right? That- uh <laughs> Yeah. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, so like, it's not a dead show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when yeah. When I saw the exchange, I was like, yo, it's not dead after all. It, it's, it's, it hasn't been dead. Like, you know, like, I've been in this fandom for since the beginning, and like, you know, Relative Chaos was like, the moment when people were saying, oh, Roddy Kinn's dead, you know, like, this ship will never come back. But no, this show has proven that Roddy Kinn is still here to stay, and I, f- it's gonna, it's, I feel like it's gonna be the end game, just we don't know when, obviously. But, like, we've had Horoscope, which is, you know, iconic, of course, as well. But then we have this episode where there's just so much, like, we're cursed, there's so much Roddy Kinn, like, in that sneak peek. Like, them stay next to each other, Lincoln showing up a little gum trick to Roddy Ann, them be excited about the food. Him be excited to see Roddy in the first place. Like, that moment when he runs to the door and says they're here, and he's, like, so excited to see them. Like, it just feels like they're already building up to Roddy can beat Endgame. I just know it. Cody really said we got you, G, and reverse the whole thing. Yeah, and like, I know you haven't seen Last Thanksgiving, but it feels like they reversed Last Thanksgiving to where Last Thanksgiving was all about ro- Lobby, and then, then they switched yeah, from it. What I've heard. They switched it, and it's all about Roddy Kid now, which, again, it's only been, it's, it's, we only have one, like, two-minute clip, but I can't imagine what else we're gonna get in that episode just from what I've seen, and, you know, hopefully they're, like hopefully they're roommates, like, I want them to be roommates so badly in the episode, man. There's just so... I've been, I've been here, I've been in the Phantom since the beginning, since, like, day one, the moment Left in the Dark came out, I was a day one fan, I, re- I still remember... <laughs> I still remember the first time Save the Day got revealed. That iconic poster by Jordan Rosado. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Dude, that was, that poster was that- what got me into the show. Like, I wasn't a fan day one. I got into the show, like, super late into that episode, but, like, I heard about it on Tumblr. Like, I heard about that episode and someone reblogged that poster by Joy Rosado, and I saw the two together, and I am a, I, of course, I am a huge shipper, and any time a show introduces a love interest for the main character, I'm totally on board with it. So when I was, when I found that, oh, there's gonna be an episode called, of The Loud, the show called The Loud House, where Lincoln Loud has this crush or girlfriend or whoever she is, I'm like, okay, well, now I'm kind of interested, I want to see how this will go, and well, the rest is history now. I'm still here for five, four or five years now. <laughs> I've been here since this, this then, and yeah. I knew the show. The moment I knew I loved the show, it was... Yeah, it was Save the Date that made me realize, oh, man. If they can pull off an episode like this, we're in good hands. Oh, yeah, I agree. Like Save the, Save the Date was the moment... I knew I was gonna love it. I do think that Relative Chaos was the episode that made Outhouse a household name because it proved to them that they can handle talking about other cultures. They can handle half hour specials. And it made people realize that this isn't a show that isn't around to be stupid. It's around because it's relatable. It's got something that all people know about. Everybody has at least moved to one or more location before, whether it be temporary or permanent. Damn it, permanent. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Like, 
that's what's so great about the Loud House is the relatability of the characters and, you know, like, the fact that, like, you know, people say, well, it's not story-driven, it's not great, but, like, dude, it's, like, the, the most important thing about this show is the characters and their situations and how relatable it is and, how, like, again, like, how they can really tackle other cultures. Like, the Casa Grandes, the spinoff show, has done such a fantastic job of representing the Hispanic culture of the Casa Grandes in their episodes and stuff, so. I'll say this, though. Oh, yeah. I'll say this. Casa, yeah? Casa Grandes is actually very accurate. The moment I realized that Ronnie had her own show, that was a literal spit drink moment. And is it accurate? Yes. Yes, it very much is accurate. Because, yeah, you, yeah, getting smacked by a chocolate hurts. Yes. Yes, when you are a bit inexperienced in culture, you have to learn as much as you can before the moment comes. That's the most enjoyable part of Casa. Wow, that you still there? That's really cool, cause like I'm not Hispanic, sadly, but I am a huge fan of the the Casa Grandes. But it's 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 been really cool as someone who's not in, who doesn't know about their culture to learn about it. And like my friend Nat has said, Wyoming Parmesan, she said that like it's really neat when they do the Spanglish, you know, when they like say a word in Spanish, but then <laughs> you know <laughs> they like you know say it, but then they like say, oh, that's what it means or something, which is really cool. I've learned more Spanish on this show than I actually learned in Spanish class in high school. So that really says a lot about the show being very you know, educational to someone like me who doesn't know much about Hispanic culture. So it's cool to see someone that someone who actually is Hispanic and can, like, be like, oh, is this accurate to what it is like being, uh, you know, being Latino, you know? So that's really, that's really cool. It is. Especially because, like, obviously you can tell Ronnie is a mixed kid. I'm a mixed kid, too. And honestly, she, she portrays being mixed accurately. Yeah, you're gonna like other things, but you're also gonna like things that are native to you. Yeah, that that's that's, that's, like, that's, that's what I meant by she's so relatable when we were talking about picking the roles. Yeah, I that's I, why I meant she's so relatable. Yeah, sorry about that. No, it's okay. I, I've been interrupting you. <laughs> I never know when to stop. But uh, yeah, that I. You know, Rodin is my favorite character, of course. I've loved her since the beginning. And to see that she is, like, a real, like, role model and inspiration to kids out there who, you know, can see themselves in her because that's representation of their culture is really something. Like, the whole Casa Grande family feels like a family that you could, like, someone else could see on TV and be like, that's me. Like, that's, I'm being represented in the best way possible. And I love that. You know, I love to see other cultures you're represented in the best way they can. Especially because people who are Hispanic work on the show, like Miguel and many of the writers and create people who work on the show can put in their own, you know, like, experiences with this culture and get it as accurate as they can. Bill deserves every bit of credit he's gotten because of it. Like, the man can write. He knows what he's doing. And he's putting it to good use. So, so like, everyone who works on Lana Costa deserves every bit of claim and appreciation they get. Because they, they know how to use their experiences for the better and not for the worse. You know, every experience you have brings negative negative changes and positive changes to it too oh yeah i i really i absolutely agree on that like they've done such a great job with both shows but again with the casa grandes they've done such a great job with representing the culture and that's what i love about the casa grandes besides you know like roddy ann and just having her own show just seeing her embracing her culture and representing that in the best way they can has been really amazing to see so they've done an absolutely great job with that I feel like that was the best part of Mexican makeover. Yeah, like I didn't really like that episode that much, but I do praise it because one Lalo wrote that episode. I love him a lot. You know, he follows me on Twitter. He's great. But like, and, and it really did represent the culture and stuff. Not like the best episode, but like it was just fun to see them like wear traditional clothes and eat lots of spicy food and you know try to impress their uh, abuelas. A mother or great, their great, 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 Mama Lupe, yeah, trying to impress her, and she was like, you know, I don't care if you guys aren't, like, always being, like, 
part of your culture. As long as you're, like, embracing your familia, that's really all that matters. And I love that about that little message in the episode. Because, you know, even though they do embrace their culture sometimes, like in uh, Misstep with the bilifical dance and some other things, they don't have to be part- they don't have to embrace it all the time. They just have to know that it's a part of them. Because, like, you're not always to be able to pick everything up from the moment you started it takes time to adapt to it so that's so like seeing how Ani is gonna be able to adapt from all these experiences she's having learning spanish being around people her cult in her culture and taking experiences from them that's something really good to see yeah, I agree. Yeah, so I she's think she's the experiences she have to find her for the better, not for the worse. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really do agree on that, and I think we got into a tantrum, like a, a topic tantrum, but uh, yeah, I just that that was a really great conversation we just had there. Um, yeah. uh, so I'm trying to, yeah. So again, like I said, there's there wasn't really any big news for the Loud House of the Casa Grandes, and we're on a hiatus as of right now for both shows we don't know when both shows will be back but hopefully they'll be back very soon in november and we'll get new episodes or curse of course we're waiting for an air date so hopefully we'll get that air date and yeah so fingers crossed yeah so i was i i always do a break for my show but since again there wasn't any news we don't need to take a break so are you ready to jump into the brand new episodes that just came out okay yeah but what's wait, are we starting with Loud or are we starting with Casa? We're starting with Loud House. Okay. Alright, so let's just get this episode out of the way so we don't have to talk about it anymore. <laughs> let's start push up over to the Loud House where we had a the fortunate pleasure of watching a certain episode with a certain character uh, that everybody loves, am yes. I right? Yes. <laughs> yep. Everyone uh, in the whole wide world <laughs> loves this character absolutely, which is the <laughs> the lovely episode "Blinded by Science," which is Lisa discovers Flip is a marvel of modern science. <laughs> uh, so, JD, I want to ask you because you are my guest on this show. What do you think about this episode "Blinded by Science"? It was, to say the least, an experience. <laughs> I mean, like, this episode did change a bit of how I see Flip. It's like, yeah. when you think about it, he kind of is a marvel of science. In a very disgusting way. Very, very disgusting way. <laughs> but, like, Lisa, obviously, is the standout. Like this, this was a good episode for her. Nothing, nothing bad with the way she was. Lincoln and Clyde, that... Lincoln and Clyde are like... Sorry, but I'm gonna have to go back to Ghost of Fears. Lincoln and Clyde are like... The, adding the Mortician's Club, but... You know, it's similar to how they added the morticians in Ghost Who. Like, it wasn't bad. It was actually good. It's like how adding the morticians was good. I'm sorry, but my boy is taking on grown men. He's not even their size. <laughs> Some king stuff. <laughs> flip. Oh, boy, flip. kind of happy he had that little moment. With the uh, with Lisa, but are we gonna ignore how we just witnessed? <laughs> we just witnessed three people straight up die <laughs> on this show. Uh, One that doesn't even talk about death as much as you think. The kill count now in the Loud House three times. <laughs> Soon that'll sadly be four because Papa. Well, yeah, it was not a sad one. I mean, then again, Casa Grandes, we just had an episode where Sergio murdered somebody, so, you know. <laughs> Backlog is an acid reflux, to say the least. 
Uh, Blinded by sex was like an acid reflex too, but like a lighter, lighter kind. It wasn't all that bad per se. Blinded by science was ba- wasn't bad by any means. It was better than I thought it would be. I thought it'd be this super cursed episode that I would force myself to never watch. Something I haven't done since Uncle Grandpa. How not to be human. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel hence, hence making him the marvel of science. He is not he's not a human being. He's just like a creation. He I mean, just wants to say he's tech- he's just built different, but he kind of is. I mean, yeah, I mean he's got a heart in his stomach and flippies in his stomach and I don't know what else is in his as body. As a fish bone surrounded by massive layers of fat. Uh, flip, flip has one of the most disgusting anatomies I've ever seen. <laughs> How is he still alive? This, this is coming from someone who has actually played Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, I... Like, Mortal Kombat anatomy is weird, but Flip, the dude has literal, literal food objects down in his organs. Police of Mortal Kombat, they all have bones. Yeah, I just, you know, everybody knows I don't like Flip, and I never will like Flip, no matter if this episode was basically a call out to the fans who don't like Flip, because Lisa was like, oh, you can't experiment on Flip, he's a person, you know? Like, it felt like the biggest call out to me, which I don't like, because, like, I get it, Loud House. I know you know all of us don't like Flip, but there is a reason we don't like Flip, and you don't make it any easier with this episode of him being created by whatever the heck is in his body. You know, I just... <laughs> yeah, I just... What else What else more do I have to say? I just don't like Flip. This episode was fine. It wasn't terrible. You know, it. it's just... I just hate every time Flip shows up and he always has to show up and it makes me roll my eyes just like, yeah, Flip exists and whatever at this point. So, you know, I'm just going to ignore him and forget he exists and maybe it'll make my life easier. <laughs> I think the problem with... Look, I think the problem with Flip is that every time you see him, it's either that it's in a very manipulative manner or a very comforting one. Or just random, because he shows up for random cameos in whatever episode he can. Like, in the Luna episode, he just shows up for a random cameo just to be funny, and it's like, we really didn't need this. You didn't need to see him be waxed. No. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no. There was no reason to use him in that kind of manner. <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think we needed this episode. Like, like, well, like you said... Lisa was the best part. Obviously, she was really adorable. And I enjoyed seeing Lincoln and Clyde, of course, because Lincoln's my boy. I loved his little, like, outfit he was wearing with Clyde, and they were, like, giving out the flippies or whatever they were doing. That was cute. But everything else with Flip and stuff, it was like, uh, I probably won't watch this episode again. I'm gonna have to agree with that. Yeah, so, uh... It's like, if it's, like, towards the end of it, yeah, I'll watch it, because it's a small bit, but the whole thing? No, 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 no. Yes. That's just discomforting. Yeah. Not curse, but discomforting. Yeah, it's not, not curse, not the good episode, but, you know, there are some curse things in here. I feel like, compared to Bad Clock, this is easily the second most cursed episode. I <laughs> Mainly think- because of Flip. I can't believe I'm saying this, but Flip carried this episode. Uh, but when I mean carried, I mean he carried it and like carried it and making it feel discomfortingly cursed. I mean, compared to cursed cows, I mean, I guess I'd rather watch an episode where Flip gets experimented on versus an episode where where a ghost possesses Carlos and like Sergio kills another bird. You know, I don't know which one is worse. I guess Bad Cluck is the worst one. Sergio- I'm sorry, but they're both equal. That's fair. <laughs> I would because say. You, no, 
No, but I feel, I have this completely morbid theory that Flip is actually a revived human. Like, he was originally human with every bit of his organs in the right place, then he died, and then they had to use, like, these spare objects to re- to, like, fill the organs that he lost. I'm like, is this man a- is this man a friggin- is this man a friggin' Robocop, but with the, the Robocops? I was gonna make a Robocop reference like, we can rebuild him. And just see them all operating on Flip and just, like, put random stuff in there. Or, like, Inspector Gadgets, when they turn him into Inspector Gadget in that movie. Oh, it's, my like, God. You got all the silly, or like, like... Yeah. Or, like, when they did, um, the Six Billion Dollar Man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just... Yeah, I know, I know television that goes that far back. Uh, Flip is not a human being. He, he's, he's, uh... He's a creation, and I don't. It just doesn't make it any easier to enjoy him as a character, knowing what he's made of now. It's a hybrid. Yeah. <laughs> Same but, with Sergio, knowing that he actually murdered people. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. Could Sergio have other things in his body too, just like Flip? I don't know. <laughs> Please do not give me ideas. <laughs> I mean, Please don't give me any more ideas. We have three seasons I, to explore that now, so who knows? My mind is already warped. I don't need to think about it more. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, season five so far? Honestly, this is my favorite season of the whole show. Second only to, second only to three. Well, I'm, 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 I'm Jeez, this is, season five has been on such a roll. Even, even if not all the episodes are like eight, nine, or tens, they're still really, they're still good, enjoyable. Some less enjoyable than others. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I feel like season five has been doing a good job. But, like, I feel like this episode, these episodes and last time, last week's episodes were just like, okay, that was fine, but, like, not amazing. Like, school was great, of course. I love family bonding, of course, but that was like, oh, let's get some, like, okay-ish episodes soon, but hopefully it'll pick up. But I do agree that season five is going pretty well so far. Blinded by Science is easily a seven for me just because of how, just because of Lisa and Clink in the cloud. It uh, flips the little moment there at the end. I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of cool. Dude was like, oh wait, I'm not disgusting after all. I actually have something that can be used super well. <laughs> I mean, it would be a 7 out of 10 for me if they would have said flip the space. Then it would have won me over. <laughs> Anything negative to flip always wins you over. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's all we got to say. I'm pretty sure that was your... Well, yeah. Pretty sure that was the most desirable part of House Flip for you. <laughs> oh yeah, when when Flip was getting tortured and beat up. Oh yeah, best part for me. <sighs> All right, so I guess we're done with Blinded by Science. So let's jump over to the next episode of The Loud House, which is a uh, band together. Uh, Luna has to decide between band with her. Uh, Luna has to decide between playing the band with her friends or with some professionals. So, what do you think about the Luna episode band together? Definitely the better one of the two loud episodes. It's like, yeah, at first glance, it seems like a stereotypical Luna episode, but when you actually sit down and watch it, it's told very inter- in a very interesting manner. Of course, we, of course, the cute little cheek squish between Sel- from Saluna and the killer song at the beginning. Everything. Everything you would expect in a casual Luna episode, but what did they do? They said, no. Nope. No more of the same plot thread. We're going to show you guys this thing differently. Because at first glance, when you think that when you read the cho- choosing between her friends and this huge band, you think, so she's just going to choose between people her age and people that are like her, but older. And band together was pretty fun though. <laughs> uh, when Luna did for Chunk, that that that's some goat stuff. <laughs> that can be taken as a pun. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. she didn't have to do that for Chunk, but she did it nonetheless. And that's progression because she and Chunk have been known as a duo since the beginning of the series. 
and to see that their progression has gone this far, that's pretty good. Same with her and Sam. But more importantly, we got to see the other two. The other two that we haven't seen since Ellis for Love. What do you think about it? Well, I mean, we've seen them. We saw them in uh, deep cuts, but they didn't have a they didn't have speaking roles. Oh, right. With yeah. The, um. Yeah. Deep cuts and game off were the yeah. three club fighting. Yeah, yeah, we saw them in there, but we, now, now they have actual like speaking roles, which are pretty cool now. It's nice to like see. It's nice to see like background characters essential to protagonists get upgraded to being more upfront with them being associated with them at the same time. Like, that's that's actually why someone like I don't like that's why adding Lair to the friend group in Casa was actually a good move because you've made him go from being a background to up front as a secondary and he actually interacts with them instead of just being one off. Yeah. Like I I want- yeah, there's a name yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Sonny. That's uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like, I wasn't on board with Lair being part of the friend group because I didn't like the way they treat him as, like, a punchy bag in certain episodes. But now that he's part of the friend group, I'm glad they're, like, acknowledging that, yes, he's part of it and he could be a friend and they don't have to, like, play him off as a joke. He can actually just be a character. Like, just let him interact with the gang and don't use him as a punchy bag. <laughs> Please. You already had enough punching bag moments in the first half of the series. Yeah. But like I'm gonna echo what you said. Like this was a just this, this was just a really nice Luna episode. Because Luna always seems that to me she always have like the same plots of episodes. Get an episode about her actually wanting to achieve her goal of, you know, joining a band and getting fame and fortune and she was like to her friends like, Why aren't you guys being supportive? This is my dream. I wanna take it on and you know, she went to this, she wanted to go play with the ba that band, but then she just felt like she missed her other band because she used to have fun with them. So then when they were going to replace her with Chunk, I found that a really nice twist on that because they didn't take her back. They were going to replace her, but then Chunk decided to join that band and they, she went back with the Moon Goats. So, uh, you know, and of course the Saluna swish. Nice to see Saluna again because we always love that OTP validation. So it was just it was just a really nice Luna episode for sure. I feel like we're, I feel like if we get another I feel like Luna is it like Luna, Lenny, and Lisa, they're like the sisters that have the most consistently good episodes. More so Luna and Lenny. Well, I think like, more I, is that I think Lola. Sorry. I think Lola has some of the best episodes of the entire show. Like her episodes are never, sure. they never fail. Well, like can't we really say Lola? That mean that's more like a twin thing. Like the twin episodes were were good. Sister Act was a little less good, but it was still not bad. The point is, when it's a character that has consistently good episodes, it gets you excited. That's why I was so excited for Ben together, and if the same, I knew I was right to be happy about it. Because, look, we got a pretty good, we got another Luna episode that wasn't a bomb. Um, that was just, it's no miss. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, like, even though I feel like Luna's had the same plot of episodes, she always does have consistently good episodes, whether it be about her or with Sam or vice versa. Like, even though they always seem to be about the same thing, which is like music besides being with Sam, you know, they're always consistently really good. So yeah, this was definitely a nice palate cleanse after whatever the heck that flip episode was. All right, let's just call it BBS. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> BBS. I liked it. Uh but um, is there anything else you'd like to say about uh, Band Together before we head over to the Casa Grandes? I hope this isn't the last time we see Chunk. Yeah, I hope so too. Maybe Luna will check like, in on him. Chunk is pretty fun. Chunk was fun with whatever episode he was in. I'm gonna be honest, like, I love both of Luna along with Chunk and Luna as a duo, but like, Chunk and Luna, that's just, the show's terms, that's just iconic. <laughs> Like, pre Alice, Alice for Love, you were like, who do you usually see Luna with the most? And then what was the answer? Chunk. So like I'm glad that 
he's so relevant to her character. And that's all I gotta say for Band Together. Yeah, I agree. I hope this is the last time we see him. Hopefully he'll uh, show up again. Because it was nice to see him again after a while. So it's good that he was still around. All right, so let's jump over to the Casa Grandes. So like, we had two brand new episodes of the Casa Grandes. The first one we had, which was one that I think a lot of us, mainly Ooh. a friend of ours, Nino, who's a huge Bobby fan, was kind of dreading since the beginning. The What's Love Got to Do With It, yeah. a.k.a. the Bobby <laughs> Cat episode, which is after a magician hit I him. I was ready to dip. <laughs> yeah, okay. So. I was just ready to dip the moment he heard it. Yeah, yeah, I, I was worried about Nino and how he would feel about it. I was, I wanted to get him on here just to hear his reaction, but, you know, I I didn't want to torture him that much. Not yet. <laughs> um, so, after a magician hypnotizes Bobby into thinking he's a cat, the family needs to snap him out of it. So, uh, JD, what'd you think about the Bobby cat episode? Okay, it was actually the most subver- subverted episode. They're all dreading it as this part three of being this, this three-parter curse, curse episode week thing. But then when you get down to it and you actually watch the episode, you're like, okay, it's still curse, but like, they need to make it this actually hard for me? Because yeah, they made it a heartwarming kind of episode. I'm like, when they were willing to accept Bobby, when they were willing to accept hybrid Bobby, like hybrid human cat. Oh man, Ronnie's speech. That. They need to do that, but they did it. I'm all for it. Yeah, like. You're my brother, and I'm not coming back without you. Oh man. Like, that Dude, that made me be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did, did they just acknowledge that Ronnie and Bobby are siblings? Again? Yeah. Okay. So you know, I'm a huge Ronnie and fan, and I love Bobby, and they're supposed to be brother and sister. We've we've never got an episode about their relationship as a sibling pairing. So like the moment when Roddy was like, "Oh, I know my brother. I know where he would be at," and it's like, "But you're my brother, Bobby. I'm not leaving without you." I was like. Oh my god, did Rodney Ann actually acknowledge that Bobby is her brother and they're supposed to care for each other and be siblings and they're related, you know? That was like the first time I ever saw her acknowledge him as her brother in the show. And I was like, why haven't we gotten an episode about these two? Like, why did you just throw that in there with expecting us to feel heart, you know, feel like feelings? It's like, great, I love that, but now I want an episode about them. I want an episode about Bobby and Ronnie Ann. Just give it to me. I feel like we're going to get part of that in curse. Really? That, that sounds like... Ronnie and Bobby sound like something we're going to see moments of in curse. Why do you, and, say, why do you say that? Because, like, obviously it's a Casa special. And, like, how you... Like, how you mentioned at one point, like, how how Lori and Lincoln would bond over Bobby and Ronnie. I wouldn't be surprised if Bobby and Ronnie bond over Lincoln and Lori. Oh, that's my dream episode. <laughs> and I've always wanted an episode about about Bobby and Ronnie and bonding over their mutual, like, love of Lori and Lincoln and how that's brought them closer to the Loud family. That I've always wanted that. It's like, if that were to happen in that episode, where, like, I really want, like, if that were to happen to Curse, I'd really want, like... Bobby to, like, ask Ronnie, did you have fun over the louds or something like that, you know? <laughs> kind of like, did you have a good time spending with, with Lincoln and stuff? And she'd probably get all flustered and nervous, like, oh, yeah, I totally had fun with Lincoln and not, like, blushing super hard or something like that, you know? Absolutely. I feel like they're setting up this she has anxiety thing. Because Horoscope made that obvious. She... She does enjoy being with Lincoln and all, but like, it's also giving her anxiety because people keep assuming about her, about their relationship. And I gotta be honest, that's a very accurate thing to have. Yeah. You wouldn't be like, you wouldn't have, you would be completely 
in panic mode the moment somebody thinks you're in a relationship of that caliber when you're really not. People like over soon. So I feel like it caused her to not only be flustered, but more importantly, it would give more depth behind her relationship with Lincoln, which I talked about in the server in a very long, detailed paragraph. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Horoscope really set up the idea of her anxieties about having, having feelings for Lincoln or the idea of him having feelings for her. And I also think it's because of her parents' divorce that's affected her feelings towards relationships because that's really the only romantic relationship she's ever had in her life, except for Lori and Bobby. Like, you have a divorced couple, and then you have the lovey-dovey couple, which aren't really great examples of seeing how you could to you know, get... be in a relationship. Right, yeah, so that's the only idea she has of it. So she's afraid of, well, one... If we were to confess our feelings, it would mess up our friendships. We're, we have such a great relationship right now. What if we were to get a divorce? What if we were to bro break up? What would happen if that were to happen? Or two, we would become Lori and Bobby and be all like cutesy couple, lovey-dovey, calling each other every five minutes. But, I mean, they already video chat anyway, so there's that, that one thing. Like, I still think that Roddy and, like, if they really were, if they are going to go down the Roddy Kim route... We need to see more of her developing feelings for him, and we need to see that she's starting to, like, mellow out, not worry about it, you know, she's not scared anymore, she's like, we're not gonna be like that, you know, freaking out over it, she needs to realize that, hey, I have feelings for him, I just don't want it to be exactly like how my parents are, or how Lori and Bobby are, so, that's how I always thought about it, like, with grandparent trap, I still think that's a fear and anxiety she has of every relationship in her life messing up because of some, like, situation messing up, whether it be, like, losing Lincoln or losing Sid or her friends. That's why she has anxiety of, like, in, um, a trend game, when her friends were, like, really excited about her wearing all these trends. She was afraid that if she didn't know anything about it, she would lose her friends. So she has this huge, like social anxiety about losing the people in her life because of her parents' divorce, and that's always how, how I always thought about it. It's just the show would never tackle it because they don't want to. I feel like that's why a costume movie would work so well, because like, if, cause obviously, Familia is a main topic of the show. And if you want to talk about Familia, you have to talk about relationships, too. And a, and a costume movie can easily do that perfectly. Like, you can encapsulate in each sibling's relationship with someone that isn't in the family. You can even go in depth more about Ronnie and how the divorce mentally worsen her when you think about it. Because, like, she was young when it happened and she had to live knowing that she was going to have to carry part of what her father was supposed to do on her shoulders. That's something that would negatively affect someone. So I see why they're doing the long development because you know that it messed her up and that if because it messed her up it's going to take her a while to re it's going to take her a while to reform from that happening so that's why i think the long development for ronnie can actually work yeah or that it is actually a problem yeah no i i don't think it's a problem like i know like, a long time ago, people were always telling me, like, why hasn't Roddy Kim become Endgame yet? And I'm like, because, like, we've seen Lincoln's developing feelings for Roddy since the beginning. You know, he went from, oh, this girl was- Heavy being... metal. Right. Heavy metal and save the day. We went from him being totally disgusted by her to now curse where he's so excited to see her and wants to spend time with her. It's amazing. Whereas Roddy Ann, we barely see how she feels about him. But then we had Horoscope, where she- really, really, um, you know, she really, like, she really, uh, appreciates and loves her friendship with Lincoln. Like, Lincoln means so much to her, 
in that sense that I've always wanted to see. And again, Sid may be her main best friend, but she also calls Lincoln her best friend. They're both her best friends, so they mean a lot to her. So I really want to see what else they could do with that, and I hope that, like, Curse kind of continues to develop her feelings where she's over their house and she's having a good time with Lincoln, and maybe this will finally make her realize that, hey, I'm not scared to have feelings for him anymore if this is just the way it's going to be. Like, we could have fun together and not worry about that people are going to force us into a relationship at the moment. It, it might make her finally realize that she's not afraid to have feelings for him and I enjoy their slow development that's what I like about their relationship they're not they're not Lori and Bobby I don't want them to be Lori and Bobby I don't want to be lovey dovey no, no. <laughs> they can be whatever they want to be you know that's what I love about their relationship they're so cool chill like I, I don't know if you watch right like I don't know if you watch Amphibia but they really remind no, me no I of have yeah, like Spring and, Spring Ivy. and Ivy. Yeah, they're canon. They're 10 years old. They're canon. You see how they're chill... They're healthy. Right, and that, see how chill and fun they are together? Like, they're actually, like, really cute together as a canon couple. That's how I want Roddy Kim to be. They don't have to be lovey-dovey. They could compliment each other. They could blush. They'll be precious. But they could just be whatever they want to be. And that's what I, that's how I wanted to go and stuff. So, yeah. Well, just got off topic again. <laughs> Yeah, this was necessary. Yeah, very necessary. It's, it's always going to talk about Roddy. You're Kim. talking, you're talking louder, Casa. Your Roddy Kim will come up at some point. Yeah, it's just it's like flip. It's inevitable. <laughs> at least with Roddy Kid, it's not like where it's overused. It's bad. It's overused. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> we cheer for every time they show up with Roddy Kid, like, instead of Flip where it's like, oh, here we go again, Roddy Kid's like, yeah, let's go! <laughs> Man, uh, I just want to... Roddy Kid for me is, like, when, like, I'm so, like, I was, notice how one of the Twitter threads I made about how it's similar to Dragon Ball's Gohan, I'm saying that because he took a long time to develop, too, and he what happened? He turned out pretty good. He became the protagonist after finally fulfilling what he was supposed to do. Be the successor to his, be the successor to Goku. Yeah, like that's Cut. exactly how Roddy Ann is now. You know, she went from she the successor to Bobby. Right. She went from a quote-unquote bully character to a really great and developed character, and that's what I've loved about her development, and then her development with Lincoln, it's been, like, amazing, just to see how much they've grown as a relationship. So, you know, that's what I like about most of the ships that I get into. I, I like development versus just, like, them getting together right away. I'm like, that's cool, but, like, what else? Like, I'm always afraid every time a couple comes ca becomes canon, they won't do anything with it. So, I always like the development versus just, oh, we're already established like Lori and Bobby, you know, so. Okay, I'm sorry, I gotta bring this up. That rectal, that thermometer in you, window. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was the funniest part of the episode where Roddy was like, uh, you have to stick it in the, uh, and then like, ooh. Then <laughs> yeah, what you said, I'm like, It was also nice to see Arturo actually be a character. Like, I hate that they never bring I, him, and now he comes back, and I'm like, oh yeah, Arturo, you're a thing. <laughs> Operation Dad. That was a very mixed episode because I'm because I'm here like there is no way the relationship with her dad would be that good. No, like. When you have a parental figure that leaves you, and you before you even got the chance to meet them or need them, that would change you for the worse. And yeah. I'm saying that because, sadly, yeah, I've experienced that. But it managed to make Arturo likable, and I found that surprising. I'm like, oh, this dude is actually pretty chill. He's not bad. He's good. Like, to see him come back, like, yeah, they're sticking to the fact that she loves both of her parents. Has no resentment. More importantly, Maria and Arturo can actually be in the same room with each other and not be awkward. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, Arturo and Maria are divorced, which I still... I still want to know how that happened because, you know, in Operation Dad, when Rodian was, like, kind of asking if Arturo would stay, he was like, uh... 
oh, well, I know where this is going. No, Roddy and your mom and I are just better off as friends. I always feel like that he was the one that broke off the relationship, not Maria. And I wish we could get, we could get like a flashback episode to where they met or where they were together and find out how they divorced. But it is cool that they're like chill with each other, like no, no bad blood. It is awkward, but it's like, oh, they're, they're all right. You know, they're fine together. Nothing bad happened, but... I feel like Rodney Ann did have some anger towards him in Operation Dad, because, like, she was like, oh, all he cares about is his patience, but Bobby and I need him, too. So it felt like she still had some built-up anger with him, despite having a quote-unquote good relationship with him. Rodney and Arturo are, like, a first glance, a glance thing. Like, take a glance, and what's the first thing you notice is that like, when you go into it knowing a little bit about the relationship, you're like, how can she be a Rodney without not sort of callous resentment that when you look further into who they how they are with each other you see that she she matured about the way she feels about him she yeah she had that pence of anger because of how because of how he because of how she saw it but he legitimately cared for her. he had he really, he, in a way, he was doing it for her, if anything. So, like, that's why bringing Arturo back is a good thing, because you see that his relationship with Bobby, his relationship with Ronnie, and especially with Maria, those aren't broken and, like, torn threads. Those are threads that can be re and heal better. Yeah, like, that's what I wanted after Operation Dad brought him into the family. I'm like, I want to see more episodes about Arturo being a better father to Ronnie and then Bobby after being gone for two years. But it seems like they just like, you know, they bring him in for one episode, cool, then they forget about him. They bring him in as a cameo, cool, then they forget about him. Again, cameo, bring him in, forget about him. I just feel like, I feel like he's always an afterthought. Like, he's not important to the family. He just shows up whenever he wants to. And it's always nice when he comes in for a cameo, but it's like, that's it. And it's like, what else are we going to do with him now that he's part of the family? Is there anything else you want to talk about for... Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, no, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Bobby Cat episode? Um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I thought it was fine. Like, again, it wasn't as terrible as we wa- we thought it was going to be. It was just... It was, it was very cringy, but kind of funny cringy. Like, there were some funny moments that I laughed at, but laughed at is more like... Why does that? I don't know why this episode needs to exist. You know, like I, I think we we could be fine without an episode like this again. But you know, it wasn't as bad, and they really tried to make it heartwarming with like the family accepting Bobby as a cat. But then in the end, you know, he bumped his head, and then he's fine now. So you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it it was just so it was it was okay. You were definitely right, though. This that's what was a life reflection episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. Yeah, I did actually reflect on what decisions I made. I'm like, okay, that was really nice, but that was kind of cringy, comical, and oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to reflect on what I've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just. I just don't want us to get an episode like this again. It's like, cool, that was nice, but never again. <laughs> All right, so let's jump over to the last episode of the Casa Grandes, which is the season one finale of the last, uh, not the last, the season one finale of the Casa Grandes. So we are officially done with season one, except for Curse. All we need is Curse to air, then we'll be done with season one, which is awesome. But the last episode of season one of the Casa Grandes is uh, Dial M for Mustard. Roddy and her friends uncover a town mystery of what happened to Bruno's hot dog cart. Which, by the way, that description is incorrect because it's not about Roddy and her friends. It's about Roddy and her cousins, Carl and CJ. Technically, not her friends. So I don't know why that description still says that. But yeah, uh, what would you think I about- your friends didn't show up. But like for five seconds. And like, I mean, Laird showed up, but that was it. Like her friend, Sid didn't show up. Did you see Sid? Sid didn't show up. That was so weird. Why didn't she show up? No, but I can. No, but I can also hear Burster screaming. <laughs> oh yeah. I told him that Sid didn't show up, and he got so mad. I'm like, yeah, well, she didn't show up. 
I don't know why, <laughs> but yes, it didn't show up, which was so weird. Why was she with a group of friends? I don't know. But yeah, uh, what'd you think of Dialect? Like from... What'd you think about this episode? It was definitely my favorite from the four. Because, like, firstly, Carl. He, Carl and Lincoln episode, we need that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The fact that Carl's into detec detectives, they have to bond over that in Cursed. We need it. So, Carl, being a detective, he, he's actually pretty funny as a detective. Like, he's, he's comical in it. <laughs> to the point where it's not obnoxious, it's actually funny that He's doing all these things. And, and then Ronnie with the vertigo trick, that firstly, it's cool that we get more progression of her skateboarder side. When was the last time that guy used the Casa Grounders again? I actually forgot. <laughs> but like, yeah. When you're Battle M, the main best part about it was how it was a Casa Cousins episode. Something we didn't, we don't get much of, and I think the last one we got was actually, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it Mexican Makeover? That was the last, like, main boredom to Casa Cousins? I would say so. Like, it was like a family episode, you know? I think the last cousin episode we had was our, the family with CJ. I feel like, besides Carl. Because CJ doesn't, hasn't gotten a lot in this show. So it was nice to see him. No, like, it was... What? Wasn't, um, it wasn't CJ. It was Carlota. Well, no. Um, VIP. Oh, you're VIP. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we, we had Carlota's episode. Right. That, so that was the last one that had one of the cousins. As a, Carlota needs another episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Carlota is... Just, I, I hate to say this, but Carlota is such a blank slate. Like she 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 doesn't she doesn't do anything. Like she just does like whatever, like her fashion blog. But like she doesn't She's have a underdeveloped. Yeah, and VIP really That's bad. Right, and VIP really didn't like give her anything else as a character. Like just like I I as much as I hate pranks for the memories. I hate that episode more than like a like a birdie passion. At least with her and Roddy Ann, she got some development of. Oh well, now I understand why you know you were trying to hang out with me. That was cute, but like she's done nothing in the show. Like the actual spinoff, like give her another episode. You know, like she did something in this episode which was good. Like she helped out with the investigation, but like yeah, I would like to see another Colorado episode. Like, I get, I understand that Ronnie is the protagonist, but like it's called the Casa Grande for a reason because. How it's called the Loud House, all of the Louds are developed. It's called the Casa Grande. All the Casa, Casa Grande should be developed too. Well, I do like how. I do like how season one wasn't really like. How season one of Loud House was mostly fo was focused on Lincoln a lot in episodes. I like how season one of Casa Grande didn't do that with Roddy and like every episode she was shoehorned in. Heck, we got, we got Uptown Funk, she wasn't even in it at all. And that's a season one, which is crazy, but, you know, I do like that there was a lot more focus on the family than just making Roddy in the main character in every episode that she shoot hoard in, like, like it was in season one, so. But, you know, we, we really do need more development for the other characters. Otherwise, Dalek was fun. Also, the fact that it was Vito, that actually came out of nowhere. Like, no, I didn't think it would be V. I thought it would be someone like Hector because he gave off that vibe that it was him. But then when you realize that V, but then when you realize that it was Vito all along, you're like, that? Wow. Oh. So like when Bruno offered to take him on the trip, I was like, so happen like it was in a good kind of way not in negative because like they acknowledged that because bruno did acknowledge that Vito did do that but he said he knew something but v bruno knew that would happen so he thought ahead of time to take Vito. 
which was smart. Yeah. Like, that will um that one was just great. Yeah, it and was, then, uh, yeah. used Rocky moment. Everything was good. Yeah, I, I agree. It was a really good episode. Like, you know, I think it was the best of these episodes, obviously, but I don't think it was amazing. Like, I was just like, oh, that was a fun episode. Like, a nice little detective episode. I feel like it, it was mostly, like, a Lincoln episode in the Casa Grande's. It was just, like, Lincoln and his friend solving a mystery. There wouldn't really be any difference of that. Just, like, Rod, just replace Rodney and, and like, her, her cousins with, like, Lincoln, Clyde, and Stella. It wouldn't be any different to me. But it was just fun. Like, I liked seeing Carl try to be you know, the detective and trying to get all the spotlight and stuff and Roddy Ann being badass with her skateboard. Always nice to see her doing new tricks and stuff, which is really neat. And the mystery was good, but I already saw that it was Vito. It was kind of obvious from the start that it was Vito because well, he didn't make it that easy when he was fake crying. I was like, oh, it has to be Vito because he's being way too dramatic about the hot dogs and stuff. And it was nice that, like, you know, Bruno did let him go on the trip too. That was really sweet. And again, Arturo being a character, getting to do something this episode. And I absolutely loved when he was uh, judging the hot dog contest and Hector was like, who made this Bobo a judge? You know, I'm so happy they brought back that Hector still hates Arturo. <laughs> that was really nice. Like, I love that. No, but not Vito roasted Hector. <laughs> yeah, Hector he roasted said, Arturo. Hector roasted Arturo and Vito roasted Hector. He's like, I don't want to be stuck here eating this man's 8 out of 10 hot dog. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was great. That was a cold blow. That was like a huge roast, man. That was so funny. Like, yeah, like, I, I, I thought it was just a fun episode. Like, I, I don't know if I'll, like, revisit it again. But it was just a nice little episode to end season one on. Like, not amazing, but... You know, they've done mystery episodes in the Loud House with Lincoln and his friends, so... I, I, and, of course, we did get that podcast with Roddy and her friend Salvia Mystery, so... You know, if mystery we did, Dunk. Right. That, I wish that episode... That, I wish that podcast could have been this episode instead of Roddy and CJ and Carl. It was, it was actually Roddy and her group of friends like it said it was. But it was still nice to see CJ and Carl together, because, again, CJ, like Carlota, doesn't get a lot to do in the show... He had one spotlight episode and that was it and hopefully we'll get more CJ in the future. But yeah, it was just cool to see them all teamed up as cousins solving this mystery. And yeah, it, it was it was it was really good. I liked it. Casa Casa Grande's for season one as a whole. It it wasn't it was actually pretty good. Like it wasn't it wasn't it's far from horrible and it's far from bad, but it's not necessarily great, nor is it like excellent. It's like middle ground, but it's more good than it is mediocre. It's like, yeah, there were a good amount of W's. They, they took a good amount of W's. Emmy? A horoscope? Oh. Global business? Mexican makeover? There were a bunch of episodes that were amazing, and then you had the mediocre makers. <laughs> oh, they weren't bad, but they weren't like average Casa Grande quality. So, if I were to give Casa Season 1 a rating, I'd say it's a pretty good 7.5. That's good, yeah. Like, I. I really enjoyed season one. I felt season one ha was much stronger than like Loud House season one. Because Loud House season one oh, had yeah, a yeah. lot of bad episodes in season one for sure. And Casagrande season one didn't have any, a lot of bad episodes. Like I can't even call any of the episodes like bad, you know? Like they, they weren't bad, but just like there was some like... I feel like last year we had some really top tier episodes like, you know, Two Clubs... Shout out to Burster, you know, Horoscope, the most amazing episode of the entire world, um, are in the family, that this year we had Operation Dad, which, you know, even though I don't like that episode, it was nice they took a risk at doing their first special, but then it felt like they were kind of dragging with some episodes, like the, the Bobby one where he took a stress test I didn't really care for, the summer episodes were alright, not amazing, and 
then they went high again, but then they went they went low again. It just felt like there was like so many ups and downs with the quality of episodes because they went really high and then they went really low. And I felt like the end of season one was like, oh, okay, these are fine. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say high, but like just in the middle, like it, it sort of. But then like, you know, we're getting cursed, which is part of season one. So that's going to be the biggest high of highs, you know, when we so get then, that episode. So then... Is it season one technically 21 episodes instead of 20? It's 20. It's not 21, it's 20. Because, because, um, because, uh, Curse is a special. It's episode 19 of the show. And then, um, you know, uh, the, the Bobby Cat episode and Dial for Mustard are, are, are episode 20. Because there's two segments in one episode. So it's technically 20 so, episodes. So, if your special is your 19th episode, then. Why? Okay. Why would you air your last episode before the episode that precedes it? I don't know. Ask Nickelodeon scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> then again, why would you air season two before season one is over? I don't know. Ask Nickelodeon. That was their scheduling decision. You know? Like, I, I wish Curse could have been the last episode. I don't know why they didn't make Curse the last episode of season one. Why did it, Why did they make you know, dial up for mustard and and what's love got to do with it? The last episodes. Why is cursed episode nineteen? It should have been the season one finale. It makes sense. Like it's going to be obviously because it's the last episode that needs to air, but it's not officially the the last episode of season one. It should have been the season finale because it feels like a finale. You know, I don't know why it's not. <laughs> you know that that reminds me of what Nate said when you guys were with Saren last night about how if. Curse does really well. The uh, that every season should at least end with a special. Yeah, like I don't know what we're gonna get for season two with specials, but like Nate said, I really hope that every season we get like a crossover special or more crossover because obviously we we want more crossover with like Lori and Bobby and you know Lincoln and Ronnie and we want those, but we also want the main crossover with the Lauta Casa Grandes. So I, don't, I, I hope they don't just give us this episode and stop, you know. That's what I said about Horoscope. I was like, well, it was great to get Horoscope. I love this episode. I love that it's ship teasing the episode. But are you actually going to follow up with this and just making it ship baiting and not do anything else with the, the pairing? So I'm glad that Curse... And one year later, they did. Yep, and one later, they did. Yeah, they, they, they decided, hey, we're not just going to bait you guys. We're actually going to follow it up. I mean, in Loud House... Ah, mediocrity. I mean, in Loud House, we had Don't You Forget About Me, which was, like, at the clear end of season four when Ronnie Ann came back in the Loud House. And we hadn't seen her in the Loud House since, you know, the Casa Grande arc, which isn't technically in the Loud House. But it was cool to see her return, and that that was great. But then it's like, what about the Casa Grandes? And yeah, we're getting the big crossover moment, which is gonna be amazing. Whatever that's gonna be, so, you know... It, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing. I I just I tell can't you wait. with this, I'm gonna say it with this much behind, with this much hype behind it. There's no reason it would not be a one hour special because like something like school. Look at that. That had so much hype behind it. But thing is, that had that was an opener, not an ender. Yeah. Like first being an hour long fits it because like because like. There's so much you could do with Curse, and you're gonna make it a good episode. Give it the amount of time it deserves. I'm like shortcoming. I would love if if Curse ends up being one hour, but I think we would have found out if it was one hour by now. I don't think it's a one hour special. I think it's just 22 minutes, which is still fine. You know, last day's giving me. Hey, it's better than it being 11 minutes. That's true. I mean, that, that's that's true. I mean, your know, horoscope is 11 minutes. It's top tier episode and flea market, of course, both top tier episodes. But it's 22 minutes. It's a it, the fact that it's a special though already makes it even better. But. You know, I know you haven't seen Last Thanksgiving, all of it, but a lot of us had complained about Last Thanksgiving being the fact that the interactions were so limited. We got Lori and Bobby and Lincoln and Roddy, and obviously, but Roddy can only got Punk Loser, and that was it. But Lori and Bobby got everything, because, of course, main couple. But we barely got, like, interactions of the other Laos and Casagrandes, so this is, like, their their opportunity 
now that they're all like rooming with each other to get those interactions that we've always wanted and make up for what last day's giving didn't give to us and it already looks so promising just from the clip and the interactions we've seen so far and what they could do with it and you know i mean i wish it was a one out that much hype if yeah. we got that much hype from one clip I'm not, I feel like I feel like we could possibly. I feel like if we got if we were that hype on one clip, a whole special, that might potentially break a sound barrier, like Bursa usually does. Yeah, yeah. Like we need to hype this 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 special up. We need. We need the crew to know that this is exactly what we want, and we want more, and we're really excited for it, and I feel like even they were, because, like, Isabella made a tweet a couple months ago saying that she just recorded an episode about Casa Grandes that we're all going to be obsessed about, and I really think she's talking about Curse, and I think, I, I think, yeah. I, yeah, and I'm really thinking, well, what, what is, what, what is, is it going to be in this episode that we're going to be so obsessed with, and after that clip, I'm like, I think I know what she's talking about, but the no, high- I think that's a precursor to what to the main meat in Juice of It. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I feel like they released that clip as a diversion to what we're really gonna witness. Oh yeah, like I can I remember when she went live on Instagram at one point. I asked her the question of, "What's this episode?" She said, "It was a pairing you guys don't see in the show as often," and I was like, "Rosa and Hector." But then Grandparent Trap came out, and not many, no one was really obsessed with that. So I was like, Bobby? Nope. But then when the clip for Curse came out, I was like, (laughs) I mean, because I can only appear in Casa twice horoscope and soon to be cursed. I mean, I mean, I guess she is talking about Roddy Kid. I mean,. I mean, you know, the way she said that with, like, it's a pairing you never see a lot. I mean, yeah, we got Horoscope and we got them, like, in the entire episode. But if she is talking about Roddy Ken and it's a pairing, like, technically the pairing we don't see a lot, that would make sense. But I'm also thinking that maybe it could be her talking about Roddy and interacting with the other Louds. Because since day one, I've wanted her to talk to the Loud sisters. And we've gotten that the b logs with her with Lucy and some of the others, which is great. But to see it in the actual show, like her, like, maybe talking to Lana or Lynn or, you know, whatever. Like, see her actually talk to the Loud sisters and spend time with them will be so amazing to see that. Like, as much, I, like, I love Roddy Kid. I can't wait to see them have cute interactions and Flora to be adorable and I'll cry, you know? I want to see Roddy and actually talk to the Loud Sisters and be like, Same here. You know, hey, I'm gonna be I'll your be fisher. Sure. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> It's like, hey, I'm your future sister-in-law. Oh, uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really Bro, want... It ain't really just say that line in the actual... I want the sisters to, like, ship Roddy Kid throughout the entire episode. Like, oh, they do. Like, I had the to... Shipper, yeah, yeah. I know the sisters ship them. Yeah, like... Because of... Uh, I mean, yeah, but, like, we haven't had oh, that... They got super giddy. Right, we haven't had that in a long time. Or even, like... Dance's resolution, or like one of the boys when Lincoln said he was gonna hang out with Roddy. And we haven't had that in a very long time, the Shipper Sisters. So like, I had a, I had an idea where like Lincoln was like gonna like maybe like they were all like, oh well, we're gonna suggest where everybody can bunk. And Lincoln's like, oh well, I was wondering if maybe Roddy and would like the bunk with me. And everybody just goes ooh, you know, or something like that. Like everyone's like ooh, the ship is real. <laughs> Or something, and Lincoln gets a bear's like, guys, shut up! You're embarrassing me. <laughs> oh, that's classic Lincoln. We ain't classic. This ain't classic Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I I still think he would be kind of embarrassed. Like, guys, I'm trying to oppress her. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> uh, oh, they mimicked him in Curse, and I'm a ghost. Oh man, ah. Uh. I'm just, I can't wait till we get more about Curse, like, we're, like, we're, we're, we're already excited enough just from what we see of it, but there's just more that we haven't seen from this episode, and it's gonna be amazing, like, I haven't decided, like, who I'm gonna have on for the Curse episode, or whatever I'm gonna do for Curse, because obviously we don't have an air date yet, but I'm having, I'm gonna do a separate show for it, and I'm gonna, like, try to ask people to come on, probably Roddy Kid fans, I'll probably ask Roddy Kid fans to come on, yeah, I will gladly do it. 
I'm probably gonna ask two people to come on this time just because this this is a crossover episode. It's more epic, you know. So you know. And that. Yeah. <laughs> She's pretty time hard about it too. Well, I've had that on twice before. I've had her on for horoscope, <laughs> and I had her on for flea market because a lobby. I could have her on again because she's also a lobby fan. But I'll think about it. But yeah. So JD, I want... again, you did have Saren on three times. Well, I mean, Saren and I have you know collaborated multiple times on things because you know he started out as a Casa Grande podcast and I started out as a Casa Grande podcast, and that's kind of how we you know eventually connected and started collaborating and stuff. So you know, I mean, that's true. I mean, there are people I've had on before who want to come on again. And I was like, guys, it's too early. I want new people to come on like you, which I've enjoyed having you on as a first-time guest. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll figure something out for Curse or whatever episode. Very fun on. experience. Yeah, th- thank you, JD, for coming on for this episode. I had a lot of fun talking to you about these episodes. And... You're absolutely welcome. But uh, before, before we go, I want to ask you, is there any uh, social media you'd like to plug on my show before we head out? Yeah, you, yeah, for example... On Instagram, you can find me as future.zenoghost. And obviously, as I didn't mention in the beginning, you can find me as your homie JD on Twitter. <laughs> Otherwise, nothing else to plug in. All right. Well, make sure you follow JD at all the social media, of course. And, of course, you guys can also join the Casa Live Discord as we've been on before. Make sure you join that and, you know, check out the Casa Live sessions and things like that. And, again, as for me, if you have any questions about the podcast or want to discuss the podcast with me, you can contact me over at XI Eclipse on Twitter or the podcast's Twitter, Casa Loud Chats and... Again, we don't know when we'll see you next time because we don't have any other news about new episodes of The Loud House of the Casa Grandes right now. But hopefully once we do get episodes announced or air dates, I will be back to do a, a solo show about discussing new episodes and air dates and when I'll announce the cursed episode. And I do want to announce that for the Casa Live sessions, we are going to be doing a cursed episode, uh, de- an episode dedicated to curse, with all of us talking about that special and overanalyzing every scene that happens in that special because, you know, all of us are super duper excited about it. So once we do get the air date, I will announce... Because the hype is real. Yes. So once we get that air date, I will announce an air date, a, 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 a time for what Saran... Uh, you know, schedules that day and it'll be very exciting of course and also uh, one more thing I did ask uh, Nate and Omid of the, of the Loud Casa Talks if I could come on to their show about Curse what they talk about it so that's also happening so that's going to be really exciting but I haven't decided what I'm going to do for my show yeah <laughs> I begged them to come on the moment that the moment that Omid uh, tweet, uh, like, he DM'd me about the episode I was like Omid I need to ask if you and Nate can ke- have me back on your show to talk about Cursed, and they are, so that's going to be really exciting. I can't wait. That's really good. Yep, I so. I'm going to join the show. I'm going to join at least one ca- La Casa for, um, like, character analysis things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about they're going to be doing that. Yeah, you yeah, should. Like, Nate said he would have me on for one point. Oh, one awesome. Point. That is awesome. I can't wait to see you ha- on there, but yeah. I was on for the, uh, I was on for the Lincoln and Roddy and Protagon this episode because they were like, who should we go to about Lincoln and Roddy? And well, the Lincoln and Roddy and professional right here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> but yes, uh, again, thank you folks so much for listening and hopefully we'll see you next time on Costa Loud Chats.